Hello and welcome to this calming vagus nerve restorative yoga to relieve your anxiety. We are just popping on a few minutes early to say hello to everybody. So if you are joining in for the recording, you can just scrub ahead about seven, eight, nine minutes and we will be starting the class. I just thought I'd pop in and say hello to all the people that were waiting. So if you wanna just pop your name, where you're connecting from, and what you would like to receive from this class in the comments, then I will just pop in and say hello to you here. I'll just pull it up on my phone and uh, it'll give you a few minutes to say hello. Pardon? Yeah, oh, Tim's put the props that you'll need in the, in the uh, comments, but, um, You'll need two blocks, a strap, a bolster. So Axel is here. Hello, Axel. Welcome. And uh, yeah, go ahead. And Amy is here. Thanks for being here, Amy. And maybe let me know what you're up to this uh, long Easter weekend. And um, yeah, it's great to have you here. We usually go live on Fridays. But uh, I had a migraine this week and I just wasn't ready for it yet. And so we were flexible. We're yogis, we can be flexible and I'm feeling so much better today. And I had some time to get a class ready. Also, I had all these classes ready, but they were all for outdoor filming and we just had a lot of rain and stuff. So <laughs> we weren't able to film them. So yeah, we were flexible. I got another class ready for you. And so here we are today. So it's nice to be with you here today. So yeah, if you're joining us, just let us know, say hello in the comments, and then we can welcome you in. And um, we'll get started at the top of the hour. So Liz is here with her husband. Yay, extra points for getting your husbands to join. <laughs> that is great. You have to share your props and cozy up. De definitely extra points because one of the great things about the vagus nerve is that you can really stimulate your vagus nerve by connection, creating connections. That's one of the best things you can do for your vagus nerve is, is have connection. So share your props. That'll be great. Elise is here. Hello. Tanya is here. Tanya is the manager in our community. So always good to see Tanya. She keeps us on the straight and narrow. Amy is here. Good morning. Donna is here from New York City. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I am feeling much better. Just always good to take that extra time when when I need it, when, um, when I'm not feeling well, it always makes recovery a lot easier instead of pushing through. I was supposed to go live with our members on Wednesday and I was getting my hair ready and sitting down to do my uh, makeup and I was like, I'll just do this live class and then I'll rest the rest of the day because I could feel this migraine coming on. And I was like having a hard time breathing and I realized this, you know, this is not on. <laughs> this is not happening. <laughs> so yeah, we canceled that live class. Ellen is here from Prince Edward Island. Welcome, Ellen, here in the middle of the day. That is great. Thanks for being with us. And Mark is here from Portland, Oregon, looking for the rest and digest. Yeah, the, you'll get lots of rest and digest today. We've got lots of ways to connect with your rest and digest. And um, yeah, there'll be lots of time for silence to feel free to turn me down. There's going to be a lot of teachings in today's class. In the month of May, we're going to spend the whole month on the vagus nerve and the nervous system. Our members really enjoy that. And so I'm going to throw a lot at you today and know that if you really enjoy this, that you can go deeper with that in our membership community. We'll spend a week on, on each of these things um, in our membership community. Like we'll spend a week on grounding, we'll spend a week on diaphragmatic breathing, we'll spend a week on um, a lot of these concepts, there's five weeks in the month of May, so we'll really take a deep dive into each one of them. So if it's something that you enjoy, you want to get uh, deeper with each one of these, then know that that's what we do in our membership community. Sylvia's here. Hello. Welcome, Sylvia. Uh, Patricia's here. Welcome. Yeah, in, in YouTube, we uh, don't, we can only chat in the box anyway, so that works well. And if your nervous system needs TLC, then you are definitely in the right spot. Adina is here. Welcome. 
Lena is here. Welcome. So this question that I'm asking you to tune in and to, to see what you want to receive from today's class is actually one of the ways that you can connect with your vagus nerve. And you'll see that in the class. People who have um, experienced a lot of trauma have a hard time connecting with their needs and discovering their needs. And this is something that we do. We tend to do at the beginning of any yoga class to see how we're feeling in our body, our minds, our emotions, our energy, our spirit, and then we check in and see what it is we need. You know, we set intention. And so by doing this in an environment where the stakes are really low, where probably we're feeling safer, you know, we create the conditions to practice it so that we can do it in our day-to-day -day life where maybe we might feel a little bit more activated. So this checking in and seeing what you want is, is part of the practice. So great for you, those of you who have checked in and let me know what you want to receive from the class. It's a really good sign that your nervous system is quite regulated, that you're really quite connected with your vagus nerve. So hello, uh, Lena, welcome. Welcome, Kitty. Welcome, Colleen. Good to see you. Welcome, um, Eva. She Eva's a member, as is Colleen. Um, she's in need of emotional nervous system TLC, connection and support, rest and digest, and decompress, much like others. So see these, these you know, sometimes we feel like, oh, you know, actually my nervous system is a, a wreck or I'm not that regulated. But when you're able to really actually tune in and feed it back like that and really give a, <laughs> a well-articulated statement like that, that's actually a really good sign of nervous system regulation. Hello, Faith from New Jersey. Hello, Adina. Hello, V. Savage from Bellingham, Washington, just, just south of us, right? <laughs> really close to us. <laughs> I guess you're probably having a fairly cloudy day just like us. I can't see the time, Tim, so I don't really know how much. We've got one minute before we're going to get started. We're just saying hello to people, so if you're just joining in, you're just going to want to scrub ahead about one more minute. And uh, we just thought we'd pop on and say hello before we got started uh, because there are so many people waiting. We've got lots of people joining us. So great to see so many of you here. Maybe the Saturday morning time is a good time for people. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, Janice is here from Oregon. Yeah, recovering from COVID. That is not fun. Tim and I had COVID in February and it took us a good month to recover. I'm feeling so much better now. Are you feeling better? Are you feeling any effects? Yeah, no more lingering effects now, but it took a really good long month of feeling quite lethargic. You know, you really appreciate your breath after you've had COVID. Dan is here from Ontario, and I'm really grateful to help your nervous system. It's one of the best benefits of uh, yoga, I think, is being able to connect with and impact our nervous systems and get to know our nervous systems better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to hear your feedback on the time that Saturdays are better. Let, yeah. Let me know what time... It's better we can do, maybe we'll do a, a poll on the community tab and see what time is better for a live for you guys. Yeah, if, if we have, well, we have way more people already than we usually have. So if it's a better time, we will do this time. Okay, it is time to start. So I'm going to put away my phone and we will get into the class now. Oh, actually, I will need my phone to time the poses. But I will actually put it on airplane mode so we don't get any disturbances.
Okay, welcome to this vagus nerve class, a calming vagus nerve to relieve anxiety. Today you're gonna start resting back for centering. You can lie down with a bolster underneath your knees. You can lie down with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. You can put your feet up on a chair. Whatever position is going to feel right for you. And part of this, of tending to your nervous system is choosing a position that is going to be most supportive for you right now. And if you're feeling cool, you can pull a blanket up over you. If you like to have an eye pillow on your eyes, you can have an eye pillow on your eyes, but it's not necessary. This, again, part of tending to your nervous system is about choosing what feels best and safest for you. So creating an environment that feels right for you is really important for nervous system um, practice. So as you rest back in whatever position feels right for you. I'm going to start by feeling the ever-present support of the earth. And each time you breathe out, you can sink more deeply into that. So I just want to start by saying that our nervous systems are designed to be flexible. They're designed to activate when we go into action. They're designed to calm down. They're just designed to be very flexible. And as yogis, we practice with that flexibility. We, pr we practice like, you know, a breath like Kapalabhati brings us up more. Uh, a yoga pose like boat pose or warrior three is more activating. So we get, we get practice being more, coming into more activated states. We also have practice uh, calming ourselves. So we really want to just be practice at being fluid. It's not about always being calm. It's about being able to move flexibly through our nervous system. That being said, when we get stuck in this kind of on position for prolonged periods of time, it can be very exhausting and debilitating. It can drain us of our energy, our resources, our creativity. It disconnects us from our true self. And so it disconnects us from our ability to reach out for support from others, our inner resources. Our, 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 it really disconnects us from our feeling of interconnection with all beings, uh, nature, our inner resources, spirit. And so it is good to practice regulating, to feel regulated with our own nervous systems, to, to feel the calm. And so that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Uh, resources and tools to uh, calm your nervous system down. So, uh, but just to know that having a flexible nervous system is important. It's not always about always being calm. So, I would love for you to, if it feels right, to take your hands and place them on your low belly and set the intention for now for your shoulders and your chest to be quiet and soft and just feel how your belly rises and falls as you inhale and exhale and let your belly be soft. So let your belly be soft as you breathe in. Feel how your belly expands and as you breathe out feel how your belly drops back and this is so much easier to do when you're lying down because gravity really helps you especially with the exhalation your diaphragm sits at the base of your ribs and as you breathe in and it runs like a, a dome all the way around the your body three-dimensionally sides and back and as you breathe in this whole dome moves down towards your feet and your belly expands it like makes more room for air to come into your lungs and as you breathe out this diaphragm this muscle moves up towards your heart helping your lungs empty of air you can imagine it just softening melting up towards your heart so inhaling your diaphragm 
moves down towards your feet, your belly expands, and exhaling, your diaphragm softens, it melts up towards your heart, letting all the air come out. So one of the places that your diaphragm has the most nerve endings is in your stomach. And so before we started, one of, um, one of you mentioned you wanted to rest and digest. And so this is supporting you in that rest and digest, this focus on diaphragmatic breathing. So breathing diaphragmatically in this way, it supports your vagus nerve. It pushes against the vagus nerve and it, meant, it manually triggers the parasympathetic nervous response, that rest and digest. And it will deactivate that sympathetic nervous system that gets activated when you're experiencing anxiety, that prolonged um, overstimulation. And it'll bring calm into your body. And you'll know that you're diaphragmatic breathing when your belly is soft and you feel your belly rising and falling rather than your chest and shoulders moving. It's much easier to do when you're lying on your back. And just notice as you're doing this if you feel calmer. And also know that you're always only about three to six breaths away from feeling calmer. So as yogis, we have all of these tools in our tool belt. And I don't know if you notice, but everybody else that's doing this vagus nerve work, this nervous system work, they're all doing everything that we're doing in yoga. <laughs> so we have these tools. And at any point, you can just lie down and if you can't lie down anywhere that you are, you always have your breath with you. And it's just softening your belly, feeling your diaphragm move down towards your feet. And as you breathe out, letting your diaphragm soften and melt up towards your heart, your diaphragmatic breathing in your about three to six breaths away from being calm, letting your shoulders be soft, letting your chest be soft. And that's a really great tool that you always have with you and that you've practiced lots of times as a as a yogic practitioner so notice how you feel just taking these few diaphragmatic breaths and as i said before in may in our membership community we're going to spend the whole of may on our nervous system on regulating our nervous system and we're going to spend a whole week on diaphragmatic breathing using some myofascial release tools and just really expanding on this. So if that, if that appeals to you and expanding on some of the other tools that we're going to be using today, just remember you can go more deep in our, in our community. Okay, so let's move on and reflect on the physical sensations in your body, just tuning into the physical sensations in your body. Just notice what's present. So one thing, um, I've been doing this a lot this week. I've been focusing on, and in our community, we're focusing on inner listening this week. I'm focusing on what's happening in my body and what messages my body is sending me. So one thing that I noticed uh, this week, and I'll get that when I get that anxious feeling, that hypervigilant feeling, a kind of real tension in my upper chest. But there could be other things happening. One thing I'm feeling right now is my right foot's getting tense and it's because I'm sitting on it. So you can always make adjustments. So just scanning through your body from your feet up through your legs, your pelvis, your low back and belly, ribs, shoulders, neck, head, face, arms, wrists. And just noticing what's present. So 
So no judgment, nothing you need to do. We're just noticing, we're just gathering data. And then tuning into your thoughts, noticing what thoughts are alive. So one of the thoughts that I noticed that keeps going through my mind this morning is like, how, you know, this is just this is how the big brain's working. How do I look in this outfit? I do, I have a belly roll. Are people looking at me this way, right? This is just how my brain works. You know, so what kind of thoughts are running through your mind this morning? And then emotionally, what, how are you feeling today? What emotions are present for you right now? So emotionally, I'm, I notice I'm feeling like really happy to be with you and also a little nervous. I want this class to go well. So that's kind of the emotional tone I'm experiencing. But how are you feeling? And then how's your energy? How are you feeling energy-wise? You know, some of you are practicing this class at the beginning of the day. Some of you are midday. Some of you are at the end of the day. Your energy is going to be different depending. Some of you might not have slept well last night. Some of you might have slept very well last night. And all of our energy is going to be different. It's going to be different from day to day. So just tuning in and noticing how your energy feels. So for me, I'm just tuning in. I'm noticing that I'm feeling quite good energetically. Like I slept well, I had a nice yoga practice this morning. So I'm just noticing that. And then checking your connection to spirit too. Whatever that means for you. So when we practice, we're never alone, right? We practice with each other. We practice in connection with nature. So just feel that web of interconnection here. So given all of that, ask yourself, you know, what is it that you need from today's practice now that you've gathered all this data about your experience? Not only what do you need from this practice, but how can you support yourself in this practice? You know, what's doable for you today? How can you meet yourself in small ways today? And then set an intention for you, what you would like to receive from this practice. And it may feel like I spend a long time with this. And again, this is something we're going to spend a lot longer with in our community in May. But this is something that uh, Mary Catherine McDonald, the author of Unbroken, the trauma response is never wrong. And other things you need to know to take back your life. It's a book called The Mohawk of Self-Awareness. And people without trauma or PTSD, um, this mohawk of self-awareness that runs down the center of your brain, <laughs> this is why she calls it that, it's such a great name, it just, it runs right down the center of your brain from your eyes down to your brain stem. And apparently people who have less trauma, this area lights up way more. There's way more activity in this, this um, area known as this mo mohawk of self-awareness. And it's really interesting to me that and then people that have a lot of trauma, this area has way less activity. And in a yoga class, we spend time, a lot of time, at the beginning of the class, but also throughout the class, connecting with our experience in this mohawk of self-awareness. 
tuning into our body, our breathing, our thoughts, our emotions, our energy, our spirit. And this is really important, really important for regulating our nervous system. So just this time that we're taking right now is a really regulating thing that you can do for yourself. Tuning in to how you're feeling, what you need, how you can meet those needs. So um, yeah, just set an intention for what you'd like to meet for your practice. And then one more thing before we come into our first restorative pose, you're just going to, while you're here, you're going to start to massage your jaw. So little circular motions uh, where your, the back of your teeth meet. And while you're doing this, you're going to move your jaw up and down, back and forth. Keep breathing in and out through your nose. So our vagus nerve is a nerve that enervates a lot of our body. And one of the areas that it enervates is our jaw. And notice what happens as you start massaging this area. So for me, I can immediately feel this kind of calming as I do this. And, you know, I'm a teeth grinder. <laughs> um, so I tend to mash my teeth. So this is a really good one for me. Yeah, so just circular, and it can be really gentle, less is more. You're kind of moving your jaw side to side, up and down, and just gently unwinding the tension here, and notice the calming effect through your body. So from here, we're going to come into supported locust pose. You're going to be in this pose for 10 minutes. So for this pose, you're going to have your bolster towards the back of your mat. And then you're going to take your blocks at the front of your mat. And you're going to be in this pose for 10 minutes. You're going to have two blocks for your shoulders at the front, and you could have a folded blanket or a your um, eye pillow is good too to put under your forehead so you have room for your nose. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put your feet on your... bolster and your shoulders on your um, blocks. And you're going to rest in this pose. In this pose, we're going to focus on grounding, receiving the support of the earth. So feel all the parts of your body that are connected to the earth here. And your props. So let your head rest heavy. Feel your belly breathing into the earth. Feel your legs on the earth and on the bolster. 
and let yourself sink into the earth each time you breathe out. Feel the backs of your wrists on the ground. And this is one thing we do in yoga really well is ground. We have a lot of poses, at least the way I teach, I teach close to the ground a lot of the time. And grounding is a great way to relieve overwhelm and overstimulation and anxiety. For those of you that have experienced anxiety, a lot of anxiety, it's a really good idea to spend a lot of time in your practice close to the ground. You know, in Ayurveda, those who have vata constitutions, those people experience more anxiety. It's recommended that you spend like 20 to 30 minutes a day in Shavasana. And I think one of the main reasons for that is because it's just so grounding. So grounding really relieves anxiety and overwhelm. So notice if there's any parts of your body that are tensing or holding and see if you can release them a little bit more or adjust your props so they're supported better. Let your chest and ribs sink into the ground. Okay, and then we're going to slowly make the, our way out of this pose. I'm coming out of this pose after five minutes just because I spent a long time setting up this class, which I don't regret. <laughs> um, and we're going to come to just a seated position. And we're going to just do a little neck massage. So you're just going to take your fingers on the back of your neck and you're just going to pull gently apart on the back of your neck. So your vagus nerve comes down the back and sides of your neck. And so just, well, you're not going to be able to see it anyway because of my hair. So you're just going to pull on either side of your spine, just gently pulling the tissue away from your spine. And this should be really calming and relaxing. You can also do the little circles just on either side of your spine. Whatever is going to be most supportive for you. And 
your tissue, you want to come in, you don't want to cause any pain, you want to be very gentle. So remember, the vagus nerve is about connection. And so we're entering into a connection with our tissue here. And so you don't want to go in really hard because then your nervous system will create a, a response that goes into protection and will reject your massage. So you want to go in in a way that's soft and tender, that's inviting where your nervous system is allowing for this massage to happen. Because if you create a protective response, it's, it's saying no to it. So you want to be very gentle. So after our neck massage, we are going to come into some child's pose. And you can set up your child's pose in whatever way you want. One of the ways that I like to do child's pose is with a bolster. And I also like to have my bolster elevated. And you can do child's pose in whatever way that you would like. We're going to be in this pose for five minutes. And one of the best ways to stimulate your vagus nerve is with sounding because it runs through your throat and neck and when you sound it vibrates the vagus nerve. So you can come into your pose. And then in this pose you can either hum or om, whichever feels right to you. If you have a favorite song, you can sing your favorite song. So you inhale and you exhale and you oh For the final couple of minutes of this pose, you can turn your head the other way. And just pause in silence and notice how you feel after that sounding.
Okay, so you're going to release this pose from your body. And we're going to set up for a supported fish pose. So you can use either your bolster, which would be a little softer, or you could use two blocks. So I'm going to use my bolster because it's softer. But if you use two blocks, you could either set them up like this is nice, um, a little broader, or like this, a little higher, whichever you would like today. And we're going to practice another breathing technique here. And we're going to be in this pose for five minutes. So you're going to come into your supported fish pose. And this is nice because it opens you up right at your diaphragm. We're going to practice a breath technique in supported fish pose called coherent breathing. And it's equal breathing in and equal breathing out. So let your belly be soft again. You're going to breathe from your low belly. And this one is a little tricky. I'm going to kind of guide you through it. It's, it's actually not tricky at all, but um, you kind of need to find your own rhythm with this in a way. So I'll guide you through it, but it depends on your body's size, like how tall you are, how much lung capacity you have. It also, I think, depends on how much breath work you've done in the past. Um, so. For example, for most people, you'll breathe in for a count of six and out for a count of six. But if you're more than six feet tall, then you're going to, um, that's going to lengthen. <laughs> you're going to breathe in for a count of maybe seven or eight, maybe even up to ten. Um, so if, if it feels like I'm rushing you, slow down is what I'm saying. And... Um, and find the rhythm that works for you. So let's just try it and then we'll kind of relax into our own rhythms. But the point is we're kind of doing even in and even out. So we're going to breathe in. Breathe out. 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 And you're going to keep going with this even breathing. And I'm going to tell you just some of the benefits of it as you're here. So each time you breathe out, let yourself release tension. This is supposed to help calm the mind. It will relax your body. It's great for anxiety, insomnia, stress. It helps to reduce worry. It will induce relaxation. 
it helps to strengthen and balance your nervous system. If you experience anxiety or depression, it's recommended that you practice this for 20 minutes two times a day. So this coherent breathing, it can be an anchor and you can do it as you go about your day. You don't just have to do it in a formal practice in, in yoga. You could do it while you're working. You can do it while you're doing your dishes, while you're cooking your meals. And it's supposed to induce resonance between your heart and your brain rhythms. It will unify your body, your mind, and your heart. If you find your breath catching from tension, don't worry about it, just continue. You want to breathe very softly and smoothly. So as we finish up here, just notice how you feel from doing this breath. At first, you may notice that it the breath can be just as revealing as the body for uh, revealing tension. So that can be something that you notice, and that's okay. Over time, the more you um, use breath as a barometer, the more you get to know it and practice it. The breath can be something that we tune into. It reveals a lot of tension that's being held in the body. But we can also use it as a way to regulate. And so over time, you, when you use it as a, something that you practice with, it can become smoother, slower, softer. So um, one thing about this breath, the way that we're practicing it about this pace, is that it's um, regulating your nervous system so that you're both alert and calm. If you were to slow it down even more, you get more into a parasympathetic response, even more rested. But at this kind of pace, you're staying alert and um, and calm. So you know, depending on what you want, you could slow it down even more. Or if you want to be like alert and calm, you want to keep it in about that um, six breath in, six breath out. You can look it up depending on your height. You might need to slow it down a little bit more. But I think you guys are all aware enough. You can pay attention to your own body and find your own breath rhythm with this. So play with it. Let me know how it goes. Okay, we're going to do a reclined twist. And you're going to take your bolster to your left side of your mat. You're going to be in this pose for five minutes. And you're going to take your right leg and you're going to bend it. Keep your left leg long. Press into your right foot. Tuck your left toe under, left hip under. And drop your right knee over to the left side. And in this pose, we're going to practice something called the vagus nerve yawn. So you're going to inhale. Exhale. Yawn. And this is supposed to regulate the vagus nerve. <sighs> so you can do a couple of these. If it starts to feel forced, you can just rest in the pose. One thing that I'm noticing as I do this, that my I'm starting to feel saliva in my mouth, that's a sign of that rest and digest. <sighs> so you can try that, the vagus nerve yawn, and see what happens in your body. Twists are also great for the vagus nerve because it comes down through the neck, through the heart, the lungs, all the organs. So it really gets into the area where the vagus nerve is. Now might be a good time to recall your intention, what you hope to receive from this class. This is a way to reconnect with yourself and 
see how you're doing with connecting with yourself and offering that to yourself. You're going to come onto your back and just pause here in the center for a moment. Notice how you're feeling. And then let's take your bolster over to the other side. You're going to do your twist on the other side. So press into your left foot, tuck your right hips under, drop your left leg over to the right. And you're going to be here for five minutes. And if you like that, you can do that vagus nerve yawn again. So taking that inhale into your low belly and exhaling with that sigh. <sighs> or actually doing the yawn. <sighs> and you can do a few of those here. Pay attention to what happens in your body when you do those vagus nerve yawns. If parts of your body that might normally hold tension, like your neck and your shoulders, start to let go. Notice if your diaphragm relaxes a little bit more. 
And carry the pieces with you that we did through the class. So let your body ground, feel the parts of your body that are connected to the ground, the back of your head, the backs of your shoulders, your ribs, the side of your pelvis, your leg. Remember your diaphragmatic breathing. Let your diaphragm reach towards your toes as your belly expands. And then let it soften and melt up towards your heart as you breathe out. And as I said, it is a good time to check in with your intention. Are you staying connected with yourself and your what you wanted to receive, are you delivering that to yourself? Are you offering and gifting that to yourself through this practice in small ways, in ways that are doable for you? Sometimes we come into a yoga class and we listen so much to the teacher that we forget ourselves. So it's really important that we listen to ourselves and stay connected to ourselves and the reason why we're here. So staying grounded in your own intention. You might notice that if you're not alone or each time that I yawn, you yawn, and that's that vagal connection. You know, when our vagus nerve is regulated, we'll feel that sense of connection. So each time I yawn, Tim yawns. You might notice each time that I yawn, you feel the need to yawn, and that's a sign of regulation, that sense of connection. You're going to come back onto your back, press into your left foot, then tuck your hips. And just give your spine a chance to unravel here for a moment. Notice how you're feeling. And then set yourself up for your final resting position. If you've cooled over your practice, you may want to pull a blanket up over top of you. You might want to bolster underneath your knees. You might want an eye pillow over your eyes if you like that. If it feels safe, it can be very grounding. We have a lot of visual stimulation. If it doesn't feel safe, you don't need to do that. I'm going to read you a poem here. We're doing Shavasana here, final resting pose. Okay, so this is called In Any Event by Dorian Lowe.
And the reason why I chose this poem is because we can trust our nervous system response. When our nervous system goes into activation, when it goes into fight, flight, freeze, fawn, anxiety, we can trust that it's doing the right thing. It's there to protect us. It's only when we get caught in these nervous system responses for prolonged periods of time that we need to bring them back to regulation. So we can always trust our nervous system response. And when we need to come back to regulation because we're stuck in a nervous system response, we have these tools with yoga. If we are fractured, we are fractured like stars bred to shine in every direction through any dimension, billions of years since and hence. I shall not lament the human, not yet. There is something more to come, our hearts a gold mine, not yet plumbed, an uncharted sea. Nothing is gone forever. If we came from dust and will turn to dust, then we can find our way into anything. What we are capable of is not yet known, and I praise us now in advance. If we are fractured, we are fractured like stars bred to shine in every direction, through any dimension, billions of years since and hence. I shall not lament the human, not yet. There is something more to come, our hearts a gold mine, not yet plumbed, an uncharted sea. Nothing is gone forever. If we came from dust and will return to dust, then we can find our way into anything. What we are capable of is not yet known, and I praise us now in advance. So reflect back on your practice today. Just notice as you reflect back on your experience, what stands out to you, what seems most important. We did a lot today. And as I said, we're going to go into each one of these areas more deeply in May in our membership community if you want to take a deep dive into them. But what stands out to you from our practice? And then just notice how that relates to your day-to-day -day lived experience. What's the connection to your life off the mat? And just taking time to integrate like we're doing right now. And we'll have a lot of time for it right now. We're going to go really deep on it in May in our membership community. But it's a really important part of regulating our nervous system, making meaning from the past. And we do it all the time in yoga. Every time we check in and see how we're feeling. And right now at the end of the class. So noticing what stands out, noticing how it connects to our day-to-day -day life, and then just what's one small thing that you're taking with your, from this class off your mat and into your life? What's one small thing you're taking with you? One small doable thing. You can slowly wiggle and stretch out. Let your breathing deepen. Bend your knees and roll to your side. Make your way up to a seated position. Thank you so much for joining me for this calming Vegas nerve restorative class to ease your anxiety. If you like this class, thank you so much for giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, then be sure to subscribe as well and share it with anybody that you think would like it. And I would love for you to put in the comments, I support myself in small and doable ways. 
and sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our ocean. May you be as strong as our mountains. And may you be as rooted as the old growth trees in our forests.